the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise, all the honor. Father, we bless you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. One generation will declare your praise to another. We declare that you are God. We have waited, we have tarried, we have prayed. We cry that you visit us in unusual dimensions. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Spirit be strong in this place. Let your word be effectual even upon our spirits in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated I want to really thank Pastor Bolaji and his dear wife and I want to thank um, all of the leaders for the sacrifice to make this happen it's been a wonderful moment um, a time of spiritual emphasis and I'm um, I truly am glad to be part of what God is doing and to be able to contribute to the strengthening of his work committed to this ministry. Praise the Lord. We'll be brief and we'll pray. We trust God that it will be a moment of encounter. I believe that all through speaker after speaker is being God just building us to give us understanding. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. I'm teaching on the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is um, probably one of the areas that people have not really taken out the time to understand. Because of the nature of his person and the way that he operates praise the Lord now the Bible very clearly tells us how that revealed from Scripture the father has been seen even though his entire form may not have been articulated and then the Bible tells us that the word the logos of God has been seen both in this earth realm and then seated in heaven that there is a personality that sits upon a throne at the right hand of the father called the son the word but when it comes to the ministry of the holy spirit the bible seems to reveal his operation and then conceal his form and the fact that the holy spirit doesn't seem to have a form as it were known to us from scripture uh, it's made relating with him a very difficult thing for many people because we are sensually driven we want to be able to touch to feel etc etc and so i think it's very important as we wrap up this conference this is a ministry that believes in the operation of the holy spirit your pastor is an advocate of yieldedness to the spirit the possibilities that have been produced in this church attest to the fact that it cannot be the work of a man hallelujah and um, I have been a benefactor of the ministry of this great personality called the Holy Spirit I remember growing up I would hear Benny Hinn alongside many of the great fathers of faith today who have demonstrated a very rich heritage in the spirit and I got interested in the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and I wanted to know more not just because I thought he would bring power for ministry and so on and so forth. I truly wanted to know him. And um, I pray that within the few minutes we have to share, um, will not be very detailed, I'll focus on his ministry. 
but it is very very important jesus walks upon the earth and he's walking signs wonders mighty miracles he demonstrated wisdom beyond this age and when he was preparing to leave he gathered the disciples who were at that time already frustrated because it didn't seem like their followership was yielding any result once and again would hear them converse with jesus asking as to what their stakes were for following jesus they had left fishing they had left a lot of things to follow this guy who claimed to be the messiah and then jesus began to introduce them to the ministry of the holy spirit he called him many things the 15th chapter of john and the 16th chapter of john contains a very detailed information about the holy spirit and his ministry and so jesus himself made us to understand that it is very necessary for a man to walk in partnership with the holy spirit in order to be a full representation of all that is resident within the christ are we together that it is impossible to represent the purposes of god in the flesh no matter how well intentioned you will have to subscribe to the dealings of the holy spirit jesus himself the logos of god walking in the flesh seemed helpless until the bible says he been baptized of john the bible says he came out of the water and straightway the heavens were opened and the holy spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove and then a voice spoke and said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased the holy spirit is called many things the spirit of adoption the holy spirit is called um the spirit of truth he's called the wisdom of god he's called the spirit of glory several names attempt to describe him who is this spirit who has turned ordinary men to signs and wonders we read all through history uh history in the body of christ is full of ordinary people who encountered this mysterious personality and he turned their lives into signs and wonders great women like Catherine Coleman would record again and again the the benefit of their encounter she would cry and sob on stage saying do not grieve my best friend and it didn't make sense to the audience who is this mysterious best friend with no form and yet real great patriarchs like Benny Hinn would talk again and again about his ministry and the results that have followed their lives they have brought glory to God others who have gone now before us like Reinhard Bonke T.L. Osborne these men subdued kingdoms they wrought righteousness by the ministry of the Holy Spirit and it is important that we do not lose the fervency and the awareness of how helpless we can become without him when jesus gave the apostles the great commission they were in a hurry to go and he said tarry ye gentlemen do not embarrass yourself be patient there is a personality that will come from me from heaven are we together now the holy spirit came upon ordinary people very weak people and turned them into objects of praise many of them unlearned and yet when the holy spirit came they demonstrated dimensions of dominion and results we need the holy spirit now theologically speaking the holy spirit has a threefold function very quickly the holy spirit's operation is threefold number one he has a ministry to creation please do not forget if you're writing please write it down the holy spirit has a ministry to creation isn't it amazing you know most people would think he has a ministry just to believers or unbelievers his first ministry is to creation the first revelation of god the the dimension of the godhead revealed in scripture that we see was the holy ghost genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning he says god created the heavens and the earth then he says now the earth was dark void formless and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the waters 
and then verse 3 says and elohim said light be you see that so the personality of the holy spirit revealed when jesus was about to become flesh the bible lets us know that gabriel appears to mary and begins a discourse with her oh this is what will happen you will carry a child and this and that this this and and she said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and gabriel replies the power of the highest he's not just called a person he's a power the power of the highest shall overshadow you praise the lord so he has a ministry to creation number two the holy spirit has a ministry to unbelievers we'll look at it very quickly his ministry is not limited to creation alone plants and animals need the holy spirit the earth needs the holy spirit the sea needs the holy spirit you will be amazed to know the ministry of the holy spirit to creation withdraw his ministry and you will see how crippled the earth becomes his ministry is not just to men the inhabitants inanimate things require him he is the life-giving dimension of god are we blessed and then his ministry to believers so let's look at it very quickly the bible tells us please look up it says until the spirit be poured from on high isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15 until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then it says the wilderness the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine the wilderness and the vine are plants and yet they depend on the outpouring of the spirit are we together now that the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine of course i know we use it prophetically to mean the wilderness in my life but this statement was literal that when the holy spirit is poured upon a space a sphere he is able to turn chaos into order so he can turn a wilderness to become a fruitful vine and then a fruitful vine to become a forest the holy spirit when there was confusion in genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 it happened as a result of the judgment of lucifer and the then creation darkness void over the face of the deep there was no human alive yet the holy spirit had to come for order to begin to happen what is his ministry to creation He's the life-giving factor. Listen to me, plants and animals and the seas do not just survive on the geographic and biological activities that happen on earth. It is the limit of science and we respect science for its evolution through the years. But there is still a lot that science is yet to discover. And I tell you in advance, the unit of life is not an atom. The unit of life is God. The unit of life is the Holy Spirit. As we continue to advance in intelligence, we'll get to a point where we'll be brought to our knees again. That in the beginning, God. In the beginning of anything is God. The beginning of rocks, God. Plants, God. The seas, God. He has to be Alpha. It's a position that no other technology can contend with. When the Bible calls him Alpha, it doesn't mean the first. It means the originator. Are, are we blessed already? So the Holy Spirit, a representation of the Godhead, Alpha. Now, but I'm interested in his ministry to unbelievers and then believers because most of us here are believers. He has a twofold ministry to unbelievers according to John chapter 16. I think we start from verse 12. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit provides the system of conviction jesus is teaching here and he's talking about the holy spirit i have many things to tell you but you cannot bear them now how be it next verse when he the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you into all truth and he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. And so on and so forth. When you read it down, he now tells you that he will reprove the world of three things. One, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. 
It's amazing that miracles can challenge people but not create conviction. I hope you realize that when Jesus walked upon the earth, they saw the signs, the wonders. They saw the dead come back to life. They saw him multiply bread. They saw water turn to wine, etc., etc. And yet, the Bible says some doubted. In spite of the miracles wrought by the Christ himself, it was not enough to produce conviction. Signs and wonders are wonderful, but they will never replace the convicting power of the Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn Saul into Paul. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn Cephas to Peter. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn ordinary men. He is the one who provides conviction. There is a spirit in man. He's planted a conscience in man. But it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So as the word is coming like this, he is the one who makes the word fruitful. He is the one who gives the word life within you. Otherwise, it's just going to be a lecture, an intelligent lecture that may impress you. And you share the grace and walk away and cannot remember anything. The Holy Spirit convicts, he reproves. Every time you make an altar call and someone comes to stand, to make Jesus Lord of his life. Do not trivialize that experience. A lot happened. A man will not just get up and embarrassingly walk in the midst of people to stand to quit another life and receive another. No. It takes the Holy Spirit. The convictor of men. It is also the Holy Spirit that brings men to a point where they recognize the need for Jesus it looks very obvious now because the veil has been taken from your eyes it is amazing who can look and yet they do not see the bible tells us that when jesus resurrected he was on his way to emmaus and he met two men who were standing with the resurrected christ and yet they could not recognize him just because you are around the things of god does not mean you can see it takes the holy spirit to open your eyes are we together now the bible tells us something very very interesting how that when god was coming to judge sodom and gomorrah if you remember that story very carefully are we together now because the people wanted to have an affair with the angels and lot tried to stop them and the people were being stubborn the bible says the angels struck them with blindness they were standing near the door yet could not hold the door to open it just because you are close to spiritual things does not mean you can see there are people who will sit and listen to a message and you are crying and then they are laughing at you wondering what in the world should convict you so much as to bring tears why should you go on your knees they watch us when we worship they watch us when we roll they watch us when we shout they watch us when we cry and they never know what this means they don't know what you mean to me they don't know It takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of people. How many people laugh at the ministry of the Holy Spirit? They see people pray in the Spirit and wonder and debate and come up with all kinds of theological dissertations to prove his ministry has not been valid in today's world. Do not take for granted that your eyes have been opened to see. Many people came to look for the Christ, even the apostles, and they did not find him. But it took a woman, when she came and looked at the tomb, she did not find him. She stayed there until she now saw him at the garden. She shouted, Rabboni, you are God. I have seen you. Next time you see a loved one who is struggling to change, struggling to see, struggling to know why you are committed in church struggling to know why you are fasting for 21 days struggling to know why you wake up in the night and pray you're already a millionaire why fast you're already a billionaire why pray you're already an intelligent student why pray i thought all of this the passion for god was supposed to be for people in need and they see that you seem to be complete yet your passion doesn't dwindle you must pray that they the eyes of their understanding be open so that they will see the bible says in isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah saw the lord 
they must behold him for who he is i have met people who have seen him i have seen him myself but it's not just a visionary context that the spirit of god must bring the reality of jesus to you otherwise the faith life will become a ritual a burdensome ritual it is the ministry of the holy spirit that gives life to your christian experience otherwise you will just follow through because people are doing it and let me tell you one day you will be tired even if you are a pastor it's the reason why people do not last the staying power the fortitude for continuity is not there after 10 years 20 years they now begin to write all kinds of things and say i'm tired of lying i'm tired of lying i can't pretend this he looked at them and said will you also go and they said to whom shall we go you alone have the word of life the holy spirit the holy spirit are we blessed now his ministry to believers we have to rush because of time there's a two-fold ministry and 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 i just want to introduce it quickly and then we'll pray the ministry of the holy spirit to believers number one the ministry of transformation please pay attention now this one concerns us the holy spirit is the agency authorized by god to take advantage of the word and sponsor transformation in the saints transport transformation is impossible until the holy spirit gives life to the word this is very very important the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you not that he will give you do you know even if all you have is truth you can still be destroyed truth in itself is not what liberates it is the guidance of the truth to be able to apply it line upon line satan uses the word of god to kill the the word is like a sword you can use it and and, and kill yourself so it is not just because you have access to truth and that means you have liberty no it must be sequentially arranged like you build a house are we together now the holy spirit let me give you an instance did you know that there is there are information that when you hear before hearing others it will destroy you i give you an instance when a believer just gets born again and the first message he hears is about wealth and prosperity as powerful as it is that believer is in trouble except the mercy of god intervenes do you know why the reason is because he has not received the messages that bring death to the flesh and enthrone christ experientially and the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them and so when that guy accesses wealth he's not been taught that all things in this kingdom belong to god including the wealth he's not been given an understanding that owners are rebels in this kingdom that we do not own things we are only stewards and the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful so the absence of that foundation will corrupt something that is good now he prospers by engaging the principles that make for the blessing and he does that at the detriment of his soul the spirit of god guiding us you need to know this before this if you do not know for instance that every time god blesses you it it provides a repulsion from the gate of darkness you do not know that now when you are blessed you will be surprised when things attempt to fight the word of god in your life you will think it's strange but when you have been taught that this is the side effect of loving god he said it are we blessed now the holy spirit bringing transformation everybody say transformation the name given to the process that makes you like the Christ in experience is called transformation. Transformation is more than enlightenment. Transformation is more than enlightenment. The Bible says in, um, I think, 1 Corinthians now, chapter 3, and it says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18 renewal of your mind do you know why your mind needs to be renewed in fact the bible says receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul he calls the transformation and the renewal of your mind the culmination the completion of your salvation experience the reality of what has happened in your spirit man now finds expression in the solical realm to make sure that you are changed that this mind that was in christ is now in you also transformation is important 
because your mind is the only gateway that allows the holy spirit and allows demons even to your life if your mind cannot host god you cannot host god are we blessed Yod hey wa hey is your name breathe lord just breathe your name upon me breathe there is a spirit in man elihu said and the breath of the almighty can make men of understanding that means i can start in ignorance i can start completely naive of spiritual things and then the holy spirit holds my hands brothers and sisters and while you laugh at me while my background continues to show why i should not rise the holy spirit vetoes all these limitations and begins to culture me into a way and a dimension this is powerful never talk about a man who has chosen to hold the hand of the holy ghost because that man is on his way to becoming a wonder regardless Regardless of what your opinion is he is a master at turning chaos to glory I know this because my life is a testimony for with God all things are possible the Holy Spirit holds your hands and turns you ladies and gentlemen into a sign and a wonder an object of praise an object of awe regardless your background regardless your limitation it doesn't matter what is an advantage or a disadvantage he is the advantage hallelujah transformation transformation how does he transform number one he activates your spiritual senses the bible calls it being alive to god first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 he makes you alive to God. He strengthens your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit so that you are now alive. You are now alive. You can be alive and yet you are dead. But he is able. He says, awake thou that sleepest. He was talking to those who were awake. Yet he said, awake thou that sleepest. He activates your spiritual senses. Number two, he brings revelation and understanding of scripture. This is very powerful. The Holy Spirit, his, his ministry of transformation. He brings revelation and he brings understanding. Spiritual illumination. John 14, 26. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit himself will bring us that dimension of supernatural understanding. I wish I had time, would have walked through a few scriptures. But it's important for you to know. That the Holy Spirit is the only one who is able to bring understanding, insight, illumination. Look up please. You need the Holy Spirit to gain understanding. Spiritual knowledge is not secular education. Secular education will, dem will demand your focus. Are we together now? And the fortitude to understand a mentor who guides you along a body of thought. But that's not how spiritual things work. You can be as intelligent. But when you are dealing with spiritual things, the Bible already tells you that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. You need to sustain a sense of perception that is higher than science. For instance, it is a normal principle that when you gather, you increase. But in this kingdom, the Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth that word that is meat and tends to poverty. This is, this is a mystery that is only privy to those who are in the kingdom. It does not make sense to scatter and yet increase. Are we together? Yes. He brings to you understanding. How does he transform? He brings guidance and direction. Guidance and direction. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. Please let's hurry up. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it and when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left let me tell you this there is no level of maturity that gives you direction in this life the variables to succeed the variables to remain are too many 
for you. Your lifetime cannot mentor you enough to understand life. You will need one who is ancient to hold your hand and lead you. Just because you are 30 years, 40 years, you will be amazed the things you will learn after 60 years of your life, after 70 years of your life. Don't put your life at that level of risk. It's important to step back and one who was there when the earth was being created who sponsored everything understands the terrain of living when he holds your hand he can speak to you the holy ghost you may be looking for a job and never find one and yet a word comes from him and just opens you up this is very important guidance and direction is very important he shows you the ways of god Bible study without the ministry of the Holy Spirit will turn you into a religious person. He has to be the Lord of your study life. He has to be the Lord of your prayer life. Are we together? Look at me. Let me share with you something. Do you know how what we call the Sanhedrin, the, the council of the elders, the religious people, do you know how it started? Back down to the time when Moses... The spirit of God that was upon Moses fell upon 70 elders. Are we Bible students? Remember, it started with the Holy Ghost, not with the scroll. It didn't start with commandments. The Holy Ghost came upon 70 elders so that they will be able to help and, and bring the ministry of deaconry to help Moses. But as time went on, they took the Holy Spirit out of the picture. By the time we get to Jesus, all they had were scrolls. And the spirit was no longer there. A people who started with the Holy Ghost. Now do not even know him. But they knew the Torah. They knew the Pentateuch. The five books of Moses. They would say it in their law. He said ye err. Not knowing the scripture. Not, not having. You have it. But you do not know it. Are we together now? Yes. It says you search the scripture for in them you think you will find life. And you will not come to me. The scriptures testify of me. That means the end is not the Bible reading. The Bible reading is a road map that leads you into an experience. Are we together now? The goal is not for you to cram scripture. The goal is for you to become an expression. So your reading is a, is a transitory process. Your Bible study and all your study is not supposed to end with a religious indoctrination that flatters us into thinking we know God just because we can quote a scripture. No, that the words must become spirit and life so that you yourself will now become a living epistle, a continuity of what was written. The Holy Ghost transforming you, transforming me. And this transformation is not limited to preachers. No, no no the holy spirit brings the culture and the life of heaven to a man he transforms you so that you do not look like your former self there is a difference between the you before and the you now he shakes off your limitation and brings you to that point everybody please say transformation, transformation. hallelujah this is very powerful the apostles were transformed because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I have found my servant David. And the Spirit of God came upon David and turned him into a sign and a wonder. The Holy Spirit came by his power upon the jawbone the jaw of a donkey. And with it he destroyed 3,000 Philistines. There is nothing the Holy Spirit cannot do when his ministry is allowed. Are we together? The ministry of transformation. The next ministry to believers and we pray is the ministry of empowerment. Please say empowerment. The Holy Spirit not only transforms. Listen, listen. Your transformation is your proposition to your world that this is what Christ seeks to produce. But you must be empowered to defend it. You must be empowered to defend it. Transformation without empowerment will create another kind of error. Because you will propose too many spiritual possibilities without the grace to validate them. You will tell people God can heal. You will tell people God is a restorer. You will tell people God gives speed. And whet their appetite like the fig tree having green leaves. And then they come and find that there is no substance to your communication. You will need power. Blow, blow, 
Blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Listen to me. The Bible says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I submit to you, dear people of God, that there is a lot of boastful speaking in the body of Christ without the grace requirement to defend it. This is why our talk is soon becoming a nuisance to society. We propose too many things about God and we round up services and nothing happens. We tell people God is able to do this. God is able to do that. God is able to do this. We live in a generation that is not just loyal. They need results. They need real results. Let me tell you this. This generation needs real results. We must be able to make the word become flesh so that we can now behold the glory if God prospers let our lives show it if God brings speed let our lives show it if God restores let our lives show it are we together now yes when Moses I think I've shared it here when Moses stood before Pharaoh he did not talk for long he just told him who sent him and the rod continued the talking there must be something in your life that keeps talking even when you are quiet. Thy rod and thy staff. There's too much talking. God can lift. God can anoint. My brothers and my sisters, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is an authorization. It's a, it's, 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 it legitimizes your operation. It's an ordination into the possibilities of the Christ. It is true that the Holy Spirit empowers. He empowers a businessman. He empowers a man of God. He empowers a student. He empowers a anybody. But we have rejected that ministry of empowerment. Listen, I wrote something down here. Confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is mere psychology. The strengthener of our speakings is the Holy Spirit. That we are releasing words that contain spirit and life. We are not just noisemakers. Are we together? Yes, sir. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 4. The messianic prophecy that applies to the church prophetically. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. For he hath anointed. The word there is to be called to legitimize an operation akin to an ordination. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me. And then he begins to list the things that he has anointed me to do. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete kotos. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto pre kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.